I've had the Zion Weeble Lab for maybe a month now, I think, and I've been sort of trying to work with it a lot. I didn't want to rush a review out. I think there's been tons of reviews that go through the specs and what it looks like and stuff, and I wanted to sort of wait until I had something to bring to the table before I did this review, so that's why I'm late. <laughs> of course, me being a Micro Four Thirds fan and a small camera fan and a small lens fan, etc. The thing that I adore the most about the Weeble Lab is, of course, its size. I have the Crane Plus as my main gimbal. I've had the Crane 2 and the Crane M and whatever. But the Crane Plus, in my eyes, for my setup, is like the best gimbal in the world. It does everything I want it to do. So in order for me to replace my Crane Plus, I still have them both at the moment. But in order for me to sort of finally let go of the Crane Plus and move on, the Weeble has to bring a lot to the table. So the size comparison is very favourable. Uh, the Crane Plus does pack down relatively well, but it swings around like mad and I've got a lot of sort of cosmetic damage on the Crane Plus because of all the axes swinging all over the place. Whereas the second point about the Weeble Lab that I love is all of the axis lock. This is blooming revolutionary. I love it when it's in the side of your bag or whatever. It's safe, it's secure, it's not gonna hit tourists as you walk past them. It's not gonna get any damage. Great, great design. Another thing that I love about the Weeble Lab is actually an accessory. Out of the box, I found the Weeble Lab sort of very sluggish to use. In the Crane Plus, if you wanna go into inverted mode, bang. Three seconds or less, you can flip between the two with no issue. With the Weeble, you had to unscrew the tripod from one point to the other point to get it into under sling mode. And yes, you can put your camera in proper inverted mode with the Weeble Lab, but it doesn't move. I'm hoping that they'll fix this in an update, to be honest, because I do like inverted mode for certain scenarios. So this is where the quick release system that Xeon have released comes in. I love it. With just one click, you can move the tripod from the bottom to under sling mode in seconds. It's super cool. I actually even considered buying a load of these quick release plates for like my tripods and stuff and changing my system over to it because they're very, very cool, very well built. And I'd like a couple of spares for like, the top of my monopod for when I do crane shots and stuff. They're, they're quite cheap, so I, I might invest. Do I wish they'd come in the original package without having to buy any accessories? Hell yes, I'm a cheapskate. But it's not that much of an expense to buy them on top. As you've probably gathered with the size, it is for smaller setups. I've seen a lot of Sony set up on it, and obviously with the GH5s and, and smaller mirrorless cameras. The motors are not as powerful to my experience, I have no science to back this up, but they don't feel as powerful or as in control as they do on the Crane Plus. I have been told that there is going to be a firmware update to sort of add more powers to the motors and things, um, and it's not an issue if your setup is quite sort of light, but if you have a heavier setup or you want to use a heavier lens on it occasionally, sometimes you can feel the motors that are a bit like, come on buddy! You can do it! But luckily it doesn't translate into the footage too much. Where it does translate is the battery life. If you do have a heavier setup on the Weeble, because science, <laughs> it will take more power to run the motors, so the battery life, which is supposedly 10 hours, it does drop quite significantly. Well, not significantly, still like 6 hours, you know. Who's going to hold a gimbal for 6 hours? Well, I do at weddings. That was a bad example. What I'm saying is if you have a heavier setup, you might want to invest in a second set of batteries. The undersling mode is one of the main reasons that I'm considering switching from the Plus to the Weebill, because doing sort of establishing shots of, of ceremony rooms or whatever, I do like to get quite low and then you can sort of angle up to get a really nice view of the room. And the undersling mode does that very intuitively. I also find that if you're a little bit new to using a gimbal or you haven't quite nailed the ninja walk, the undersling mode is slightly more forgiving in my experience. I guess because you're lower anyway, it's sort of, you intuitively would bend your knees more, which will give you better, smoother footage. So I do like undersling mode for that.
<laughs> Another wonderful, very well designed plus point versus the Crane Plus the Weeble has is the quick release system. I love this. You can do this on the Crane Plus by buying sort of another quick release plate and stacking them, but it's not something that it does out of the box. With the Weebill, you can just unscrew a latch, take your camera off as it stands and instantly put it back on and you're good to go. It also works if you have the follow focus attached as well. So you can set everything up beforehand, stick it on the gimbal and you're good to go within seconds. With the Crane Plus, even if you sort of mark where you've put on the release plate, sometimes you don't put it back exactly where it was and the balance isn't quite right. But the Weeble has learnt from previous models and now you can do that straight away. In terms of setup, I've always used my Weeble on the strongest setting just to give the little motors a fighting chance and it does work quite well as you can see from the footage. going to sell my battered crane plus, my workhorse, my money maker, that's falling to actual bits by now. Um, the quarter screw at the bottom falls out consistently. I've knocked the, the dial mode thing off somewhere along the way. I've scratched it to holy hell and it still just works like an absolute beast. In fact, I don't think I've, I can even sell it in the condition it's in, so I'm going to keep it as a backup. But the question is, will I switch from that to the Weeble for wedding season in 2019? And I think the answer is yes. I'm probably going to get a second set of batteries just to be sure, and I'm a bit annoyed, but I can see why for the size, that the existing batteries don't work. They seem to be sort of a proprietary new shape for the Weebill. I'm going to get some new batteries. I'm going to get some more quick release plates for my monopod crane jibby shots of joy. That's what I'm calling them. And I'm going to give it a go. And if I come into any issues whatsoever, I have my battered crane plus as a backup, but I don't foresee any issues. I think it will only make things easier. I'll be able to set up quicker by just sticking it on and off we go. I'll be able to lock down the gimbal so it won't get as battered as my Crane Plus over the years. I'll be able to actually put it inside my bag instead of hanging outside my bag because the Crane Plus, even when it's packed down, it just takes up the entire bag. While I might not use vortex mode for weddings, be quite an interesting edit. I do think it might be fun to play with in travel vlogs and things on here and that is a function that the Crane Plus both can't do and will never be able to do so that's an additional feature. I also am quite intrigued by sort of the it's like the phone go mode on the Smooth 4 where you push a button in and you can move the Weeble really quickly. I haven't yet found much of a use for it but I imagine if you were trying to film sort of I don't know, motorbikes or something that goes past very quickly, it might come in handy. It might just be a complete gimmick that's a throwback from the phone gimbal, but it's something to keep in your toolbox in case you ever need it, I guess. I love also that the Weebill has the OLED screen. The Crane Plus is dead simple to use. You've basically just got one button that you press a combination of times and magic happens. But I do like that the Weebill is much more tactile. It's sort of taken a leaf out of the Smooth 4 book. There's buttons and triggers everywhere. And it's so good that you can use it without using your phone and you've got your dial to show how much battery life you've got and, and you've, you've got a little menu that you can flip through to change sort of motor settings or whatever very easily. So there we go. I'm going to continue using it more. I hope you enjoyed the footage and if you have any questions about it do let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on the Weeble? 
I have my mind in two camps at the moment because I feel like almost the Crane Plus, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, mine's on the verge of being broke, but it's a beast. You know, you want smooth footage. It's easy to use. It's very robust. It does the job. Is the Weeble trying to do too much, maybe? Or is getting more advanced features into the gimbal arena a good thing? What do you think? Let me know and I shall see you soon.